Hi everybody, just a quick video today to look at um, some ways that we can work with our geospatial data, maybe make us uh, more productive as we work with this geospatial data in our Civil 3D model. Um, we've looked at some ways already that we can uh, control how some of the data is formatted. We've looked at uh, some different ways that uh, we can stylize it, maybe save it as a data layer. What I want to look at today is through the use of expressions, which we've touched on a little bit, take that maybe one step further so we can start to perform some analysis on this data. As an example, I've got some parcels here that uh, are of various sizes. Let's say that uh, as I bring this information in, if I have uh, a parcel of a particular size, maybe less than uh, 12,000 square feet, that's a problem, and I'd like to be able to quickly identify those within my model. This could also be for soils. Maybe I'd like to quickly identify any soils that are of a type that um, I've got a you know high propensity for uh, um, soil erosion and things like that. Um, I'd like to be able to do some analysis and be able to identify those quickly. So let's take a look at a quick example of that using a conditional statement, which is our tool for today. So let's begin. With, uh, with our model here, uh, I've got a couple parcels, about 11,900. Here's one over 12. So anything that's less than 12,000, we'll say that that's our minimum. We would like to color those differently. We'll begin by bringing up the task pane if we have not already. We'll use the map W space command for that. Turn on the, the uh, task pane. We'll go ahead and expand our uh, parcels. And what I'm going to do is we're going to go to, uh, this time, not the feature labels, but instead the style. All right, this is where one of the videos we started with, uh, we were going to control how that was displayed. Now, we'll come down and look at the fill that is being used for that particular style. All right, and what I want to do is the color is the thing that I would like to update based on a conditional statement. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on fill, and we see that down at the bottom is an area here for expression, similar to the expression that we used for the actual annotation. So let's use an expression. All right, and the first thing that I want to do here is the, uh, the colors that we're working with. I want to be able to uh, capture those uh, numbers because, to be brutally honest, it's uh, a little more complicated than just blue or red or green. So what I'm going to do, let's, uh, I'm going to create a new text file here quickly. Uh, apologize it doesn't show up right on the screen as we do it, but let me make this. So I'm just bringing up my notepad here so I can scribble some numbers in for us to see. So this, we will capture this number, copy it to the clipboard, bring up my uh, notepad file here, and we'll go ahead and paste that. That is my number for the uh, good uh, situation. Let's come back. I'm going to close out of this guy. I'm just doing this to capture the uh, the numbers. Uh, let's go ahead and set this maybe for a bad situation. We'll go with uh, go with a darker red. Let's maybe it's going to be bad. We'll go with a deeper red. We'll do that. Let's go to expression. So once I've got it set, that will show me what that number is. So we'll go ahead and select him. Copy him to the clipboard. Uh, we'll add that to my notepad. That is going to be the number that we are going to use for the bad. All right, red, the universal uh, problem color. Okay, so now I've captured those two. What we're going to do is we're going to create a, uh, a function that we can uh, have it determine based on the area for my parcels how the parcel should be filled. All right, so it'll be a conditional statement. So we'll come into here, use expression. We'll go ahead and clear this off. Okay, and we'll, uh, we'll start by coming over here to uh, conversion. Here is our conditional statement, if. So I'm going to say if, uh, conditional statement, I'm going to say if the area, and we'll say is less than, or uh, less than, yeah, we'll say less than 12,000, because we'll say 12,000 is our minimum. So we could say it's uh, less than 12,000. Okay. Uh, if it was up to an equal, uh, you know, up uh, less than 12,000 or, you know, if I wanted to go the other way, greater than or equal, uh, sometimes, you know, need to think about that a little bit, which one you're going to pick. But in our case, 12,000 is good. So if it's less than 12,000, my true value, all right, that would be bad. 
because it's less than 12,000. Let's go ahead and grab from my notepad here. That's the bad value. So if it's less than 12, I'm going to copy that. And the value that it's going to return for color is the bad one. All right, and which means that if that's false, it's 12,000 then or higher, then that would be the good one. So we'll come back, we'll select this guy, copy that to the clipboard, come back to false value, we'll say paste. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to come down and we're going to validate that, just to be sure. When I validate it, it's telling me I've got a problem, which this is a fantastic tool to have, because in, in trying to troubleshoot some of these things, um, if there's a problem, we'll know it before we, we go any further with it. Um, and, and hopefully you've seen as we've gone through several videos doing these that, you know, we can create a piece, you get that piece working, and then you can cut and paste and then stick that as part of another function. You get that working, then maybe take the whole of that, cut and paste, stick it in as part of another function, and kind of build it and make it more complicated as you go rather than trying to write it all from scratch. Now in this case, this is a tougher one to figure out. It's telling us that the types are mismatched. All right, what I found with area is... Actually, not area, I shouldn't say, but with the conditional statement if, what I need to do is, is come into this, this portion of it, and I need to put this in quotes. So uh, if the area, oops, we'll say I deleted a comma there. So I need to put that portion in quotes. All right, if I put that portion in quotes, and that should take away my problem. All right, uh, not exactly certain why that is, because... You know, the number coming out is, you know, um, probably be represented as a uh, CCA. Yeah, it could be a hexadecimal, but it, it's not necessarily text. But uh, like some of the issues we had before where the value that was coming out for our annotation was a um, had to be a text string. In this case, for whatever reason, it's got to be in quotes. That should take care of that problem. If we say validate, it says everything that is uh, is valid. So now if we click on OK, for every parcel it's going to look at it, if the area is less than 12,000, it's going to mark it as red. If it's greater than 12,000, it's going to be blue. And the importance to remember how that's formatted is in the future. If you need to make changes, you need to know, you know which is red and which is blue because, as we said, not uh, the easiest to tell based on those. So we'll go ahead and we'll click on OK. Uh, it comes out solid black. Why? Because it's an expression. You know, they're all they're all going to be unique. So it'll be displayed in here as black. But if we click on apply, it automatically updates our display. I'll click on close. I'm going to take and back up. And now immediately I've got an exhibit that's showing me all of the parcels that uh, if 12,000 was my limit that don't meet that 12,000 square foot requirement. And those are uh, automatically identified. All right. So uh, whether it be parcels, whether it be soil, whether it be, um, you know, uh, uh, city districts, you know, whether I'm inside or outside the corporate limits, uh, lots, of, uh, lots of reasons that we would want to do that. When we work in models or with models in Civil 3D, geospatial data is always a part of that. And hopefully looking at the tools that we've uh, looked at through this series, both being able to create a data layer being able to uh, change the annotation and that for how it's displayed and also doing some analysis can help you with working with that geospatial data within your civil 3D model. So hope this has been helpful and I look forward to talking to you again soon. See ya.